Hi, so this is our third video in learning about how to build chain code and interact with the IBM blockchain service. Um, in this video, we're going to actually install the Hyperledger fabric onto our laptop and we're going to download the sample uh, chain code and we're going to show you how to add some uh, functions which allow you to do the interaction um, with with the network. So let's get started. So now we're all good. Um, so what we're going to do now, um, we're going to interact. We're going to show you uh, how to interact with your blockchain uh, with um, by modifying the Learn Chain Code script. Um, so what we're going to do is um, you're implementing the shim interface. Um, there's three main functions. Uh, there's init, invoke, and query. All these three functions uh, take a function name as an argument and an array of strings. And, um, but the, and they're all called at different points. Um, your development path will end up with a working chain code that creates some generic assets for an exchange on a blockchain network. So we're going to open up the Go code um, chain, chain code underscore start dot go. Uh, use your favorite editor. I tend to like to use Atom, or you can use you know uh, right here at the command line something like Vi or Nano. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to go to Atom, and there we go. Your source. It's our learn chain code. Here's my start. Here's my chain code. Uh, start go. We're looking at chain start go. Uh, before we start making changes, let's look at a couple of the things that are in the script. Uh, at the top, you'll notice that there is a uh, main function. And the main function, it's always at the top. And what will happen as initiation, this registers the chain code um, with a peer. Um, next, let's look. There's three functions that are in here. Uh, there's the initialize, which resets uh, everything. Uh, the invoke. Uh, which will make modifications and then a query function. First one we're going to work with work with is the init. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's called when you first deploy your chain code, um, and it's actually configuring an initial state for a single key pair value on the ledger. Um, so we want to add some code to what's there uh, because we want to add something called the dub stub dot put state. Uh, that requests that when a value is sent in as the first argument in the function as a string, um, that it's going to be stored under a key called hello world. Now, the code for you is actually already written. It's over in the tutorial. So let's just go back there for a second. Let's scroll down. And you'll see right here, here's we're going to set a variable. Just copy this code. And you're going to want to put it right after the first if statement. too many lines. All right. So um, now what happens if an error does occur? It's going to be because a wrong number of arguments or something happens writing to the ledger, but you've just written the initial fo the function. So the next is the invoke function. Um, the invoke functions really do what, you know, the real work on the blockchain network and they're used to update 
the ledger. Uh, this function, it receives a, it actually receives a function as an argument as well as an array of arguments. Uh, based on the function passed, it calls a helper and or it returns an error. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a rate function um, is what's shown in the tutorial. So let's just flip back to the tutorial for a second. And what you're going to see here, right here, is you're going to add you're going to add this code, which we'll call a rate function. Oops. I'll put it after here. And what you'll notice if you've looked through the script, right, there is there is no write function. So we're gonna have to add that. And again, the code's already done for you in the tutorial, so you simply need to copy it. put it at the end of the script and it's going to be similar to the code in the init function because uh, it's going to be using um, that command right here stub put state and it's going to look up um, the key value and it's going to update uh, the value that's associated with that all right so now so you're almost done. The final function that we want to work on is the query function. Um, this queries the chain code state. It's not going to add any blocks to the ledger like the other functions. Uh, only deploy and invoke do that. Um, but we're going to change the function. Let's just find it. Scroll up Oop, just a little bit. And here you go. Here's the query function starting at line 66. Um, again, you know, you're passing in a function name as a string, and you're you're passing in an array of variables. Um, so let's change this function. We're going to change it to read. Okay. Go back to the tutorial for a second sure there's nothing else that we're missing and nope we're good uh, but again just like when we um, change the inv uh, invoke function um, we've just created a call to a function that is not in our chain code so again this is here for you so I'm going to copy and paste it again we're going to put this at the end of our chain code Stick it right after the right, and there we go. Uh, what you're going to notice is instead of stub put state, it's actually going to get state. You're passing in the key value, and it's going to bring back your value. Or if for some reason it doesn't work, it's going to throw throw an error. So, okay, so we're all done. So. Just going to save that. Let's go back to our terminal session for a second. And make sure we're in the start directory. And what we're going to do, um, let's just see if we have any errors. And we don't. We've done everything correctly. So we've actually just showed you the main functions in the Go code to interact with um, with the network. And the final step is to push this up uh, to uh, your GitHub repository. So I'm just going to step back one directory to our learn chain code. So um, 
let's see, make sure we captured the changes. Uh, as you see there, we have modified the chain code start go. So we're going to just stage all our changes. And then we're going to commit them. Type whatever you like. Okay, so uh, now let's push it. All right, so you now push your, your code up to the GitHub, and that's it. Um, so this is our next uh, to last video. Uh, there's one more. Uh, so now what we're going to do in the last video, uh, we will go over to Bluemix and we'll interact with the chain code using Swagger APIs. Thanks very much.